Please join me for the call to worship. We gather with joy, for Easter continues. Locked doors have been opened, and fear has turned to peace. We celebrate the presence of the risen Christ among us. Doubts have been erased, and uncertainty has turned to faith. Let us rejoice and be glad. Let us offer our prayers and our praise with humble, hopeful hearts. new life. We come to you rejoicing in the mystery of the risen Christ, present among us always, even when we least expect him. We marvel at your constant love, your victory over evil and death, and your resurrecting hope which embraces us in every circumstance. Trusting in these gifts, we seek to live as Easter people in every place and time. Strengthen us with the gift of your Holy Spirit in this time of worship, and bless us with your peace through Christ, our risen Lord. Amen. Yeah. 
Good morning, everyone, on this warm April weekend. New life springs all around us. Thanks for joining us this morning for the St. Andrew's Own Sound Virtual Service. I'm Steve Warner, one of the music leaders from the church, and along with my cohort, Matthew Allard, we help to bring together the weekly content for our live streams. And of course, much of our spoken content is now provided by our new lead minister, Reverend Ed, who we've heard from already and will again when he brings his message in a few minutes. Thanks to the praise team for their involvement in that opening song, and choir and Matthew for the hymn we just enjoyed. Last Sunday, due to a technical mishap, one of the songs the praise team had recorded at our Thursday night rehearsal didn't end up being included in the stream, that being the new song, Living Waters, that I had included a few weeks back. Anyways, we got it in this week, and it will be right before Ed's message. But before we get to that, we're going to be first hearing from Gladys as she shares our scripture for today, and then enjoy our weekly visit from Andy and Sharon. Gladys? Our scripture reading this morning is from Proverbs chapter 3, verses 5 and 6. Trust in the Lord with all your heart, and do not rely on your own insight. In all your ways acknowledge him, and he will make straight your paths. Our second reading this morning is John 20, verses 19 and 31. Jesus appears to the disciples. When it was evening on that day, the first day of the week, and the doors of the house where the disciples had met were locked for fear of the Jews, Jesus came and stood among them and said, Peace be with you. After he said this, he showed them his hands and his side. Then the disciples rejoiced when they saw the Lord. Jesus said to them again, Peace be with you. As the Father has sent me, so I send you. When he had said this, he breathed on them and said to them, Receive the Holy Spirit. If you forgive the sins of any, they are forgiven them. If you retain the sins of any, they are retained. Jesus and Thomas. But Thomas, who was called the twin, one of the twelve, was not with them when Jesus came. So the other disciples told him, We have seen the Lord. But he said to them, Unless I see the mark of the nails in his hands and put my finger in the mark of the nails and my hand in his side, I will not believe. A week later, his disciples were again in the house, and Thomas was with them. Although the doors were shut, Jesus came and stood among them and said, 
Peace be with you. Then he said to Thomas, Put your finger here and see my hands. Reach out your hand and put it in my side. Do not doubt, but believe. Thomas answered him, My Lord and my God. Jesus said to him, Have you believed because you have seen me? Blessed are those who have not seen and yet have come to believe. The purpose of this book. Now Jesus did many other signs in the presence of the disciples, which are not written in this book, but these are written so that you may come to believe that Jesus is the Messiah, the Son of God, and that through believing you may have life in his name. This is the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Andy, your friend Sid is coming today. Yes, Sid really is coming for a visit. Here he is now. You're very excited to see Sid. One of the disciples named Thomas didn't believe that Jesus was alive until Jesus appeared in the room with the disciples. Thomas saw Jesus, and then Thomas believed. I know, I have faith, that Jesus is with us, just like we know our friends are at home worshipping with us today. Say goodbye. washing, filling in these 
the Lord of living waters. Shall we pray? Dear Lord, may the words of my mouth, the meditation of all our hearts together, be pleasing and acceptable to you, O Lord, our rock and our redeemer. Amen. Dear congregation, after visiting our elderly mothers last week, my wife Jackie and I drove home and stopped at a cozy looking coffee shop. We walked in and noticed behind the cash register a sign on the wall which said, quote, trust in the Lord with all your heart and do not rely on your own insight. In all your ways, acknowledge him and he will make straight your paths. And that's taken from Proverbs 3, verse 5 and 6. We commented to one another about how true that was and how great to see such a sign in a regular coffee shop. This is an Old Testament piece of scripture, and it speaks about trust in the Lord. When one follows these verses, one is saying God matters in their life. We are so tempted every day to rely on our own insights. Trusting in God is allowing God to direct you, acknowledging that you are not alone and not totally self-sufficient. Trusting in God gives you courage to face the present and the future. When facing a difficult situation, a prayer of trust offered to God in the midst of it opens the door to allowing God to show you the way through, giving you what you need at that moment. A member of my congregation or my former congregation in London carried the scripture reading in his wallet. Trust in the Lord with all your heart and do not rely on your own insight. In all your ways, acknowledge him and he will make straight your path. That is what kept him focused and what really mattered in his life and the knowledge that God knows more than he does and how things will work out for good if he puts his trust in God. In our second scripture reading for today from John 20 verse 19 to 31, I want to focus this message on the theme found in John 20 verse 29, quote, blessed are those who have not seen and yet have believed. In John 20, verse 19, we are told that in the evening, after the discovery of the empty tomb, the disciples were together behind locked doors and afraid. What were they afraid of? The Romans? The Jews? Maybe they were trying to make sense of it all as they spoke with one another, when suddenly Jesus stands among them and greets them with, Shalom, peace be with you. Put yourself in that room and imagine how you would have felt if your deceased loved one said, quote, hello fam and friends. Then we read in John 20, verse 25 to 29, the story of Thomas, who was not present at Jesus' first appearance. And then we read in verse 29, quote, blessed are those who have not seen and yet have believed. We start becoming familiar with the expression, quote, doubting Thomas. However, This story is not about judging and condemning Thomas for his lack of faith. Rather, it is about Jesus reassuring Thomas that in the midst of his doubt, he can come to faith. In the connection with the trauma of Jesus' death that Thomas and the disciples felt, consider this story. After a traumatic encounter with a storm, a six-year-old girl developed an intense fear of wind. She was totally convinced that when the wind blew hard, one of the big trees around their home would come smashing through their roof. A trusted friend wisely reassured her that what she couldn't see was an enormous root system that secured each tree in place. Eventually, the young girl was persuaded and believed. Following the traumatic events of Jesus' death and resurrection, Jesus' disciples were dizzied by many different emotions. How is it possible that Jesus went from being dead to alive, from lying cold without any movement in a tomb, to walking and talking? Thomas made it clear 
that he wouldn't believe until he saw Jesus with his own eyes and touched him with his own hands. Thomas thought that seeing was the only way he could believe. But Jesus gently addressed Thomas' assumption. After inviting Thomas to see and touch his wounds, Jesus said, Blessed you have seen me. You have believed. Blessed are those who have not seen and yet have believed. Jesus declares that all who believe and haven't seen are truly blessed. That includes you and me. Believing is about trusting in our heart. God's sovereign love revealed through Jesus by God's word and spirit. God plants the seed of faith in us and helps us believe, even when we cannot see. Blessed are we. I know that Jesus matters in my life, but how do I keep that before me so I remember to trust? Lord, I believe, we say, help me in my unbelief. Maya Angelou, who was a renowned poet, author, and active in civil rights, was a woman of faith. She shared that reading the words, God loves me over and over again, impacted her trust in God. She said that this force, God, that makes leaves and fleas, stars and rivers, loves me. It's amazing, she said. I can do anything and good things and do it well. The fact that God loved her amazed her, and she was grateful for that. When she knew not only that there was a God, but that she was a child of God, and she comprehended that and internalized that in her heart, she became courageous. Jesus matters in our life when we have nurtured the idea that faith is not a series of beliefs, but a process of internalizing that, getting to know the person of Jesus Christ. Though we are not there yet in trusting the Lord fully, we learn to trust more fully by repeating these facts of our reality, the facts that we are loved children of God, loved by God, and we can trust in that love. Remember that Jesus is alive and Jesus' presence is among us to guide us in all our ways. It's important to know personally that Jesus matters. But this knowing is so connected to Christ's body, the congregation, the church, in giving and receiving courage where there is doubt. The congregation gives us confidence in reaching out and doing good in the name of Christ. In worship, we can see Christ in others. We experience Christ alive in the sacraments, in the singing and the music and through the reading of the word and the word proclaimed. We experience Christ's presence. We point one another to God's love, making the risen Christ visible to them. Though we have times of doubt, we are not condemned, but encouraged by one another to trust in the Lord with all our heart and not rely on our own understanding. That is Jesus' amazing love, and that matters for everyone in our life today and for eternity. How does Jesus matter in your life? In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Shall we pray? Dear loving God, thank you for your amazing love. We can count on that each day and in all circumstances. Help us to remember, Lord, that you matter in our daily lives and that we want to know and to trust you more closely. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. I just want to announce that we will be starting a four-week sermon series on hospitality. In God's great love, God has shown hospitality to us through his gifts of grace each day, through Jesus Christ and by the Holy Spirit. And we are called in the name of God to offer hospitality to others. Though it is at this time of shutdown and a stay-at-home order, we can practice hospitality in new ways to one another and to our neighbors. Some of our congregants have prepared special parts for this series on hospitality. Stay tuned for next week. God bless you. At the dawning of
salvation in the morning of the world. Christ is raised, a living banner, by the love of God unfurled. Through the daylight, through the darkness, Christ is on His great array. All the saints and all the sinners, He has gathered. He has suffered, he has triumphed, life is his alone to give. As he gave it, once he gives it, evermore that we may live. For the glory of salvation in the dawn of Easter day, we will praise you, loving Father, we rejoice to sing and pray. With the Son and with the Spirit, lead us on your great way, saints and sinners. Celebrating your triumphant love today. Thanks, choir, Ed, Sharon, and Gladys for all that we just heard. Although we find ourselves in an even more severe state of lockdown than we were under just a week ago, I hope that with this warmer weather you have been able to get outside and enjoy it. We're going to close our time with the song, You Say. And due to the options technology affords us, today's version will include a new take by myself and the praise team, but it will pull Paige's recording from back in early February when she did this song with us. Thanks to Doug for all of his editing and nature footage work, as well as for pulling together the announcement reel that's being tagged on the end of each week. Have a wonderful week, everyone. Thankful to be alive and live in this great country.
Thank you.